G'day, my name's Jimbo and we are in North Island, New Zealand on Top Dressing Ops in this Air Tractor 502B. Hop along as we do a couple of loads. And we're just coming to touch down this nice flat airstrip. It's about 350 metres long with a good drop off on the end and no fences to need to climb over. That's very good. There is a bit of early morning dew which you need to be wary of, it can get a little bit slippy. That's the bin there on the right, and I'm spinning around you can see the truck here. Lining up so the truck can come in. Opening my lid, going through my checks. Now this is a very neat hydraulic system for the hopper controls, which is linked to the GPS. So I've only actually got a small little switch, an arming switch, and the doors are controlled electronically by the computer, which adjust to open and close according to my ground speed. It's quite a uh, neat tool, it allows me to focus more on just flying. Load's gone in, shut the lid, stir the pyros, check the flaps, truck's out the way. Now we feed it, and as we trundle down the airstrip, I'm using my peripherals to check any red flashing lights from the gauges. This is a digital MVP system for the engine instruments. They are outstanding for letting you know when there's any issues. And there we go, falling off the end, lowering our nose to get some air speed up, doing a gentle turn to the left to clear these hills on the right. Slowly raising the flaps. We pull around the turn. Trying to keep 100 knots here with the flaps up. Seems to perform just as well as 85 with the flaps down. And I'll be turning around onto my run. All the while making sure we've got sufficient ground clearance there. But we're essentially doing a 270 degree turn as we come around using my light bar and the TV screen for guidance. This is a single row LED light bar. Personally prefer the other dual row LED light bars. I find these ones a lot trickier to hold a straight line. Uh, so I've got to use the TV screen as a bit of a reference. And just coming up on the left, that is the airstrip we've just taken off from. Now as we're on a run, all I'm doing here is I've flicked a tiny little switch by my right hand thumb. That's armed the whole system and I'm leaving the rest up to the computer. And this relies on accurate mapping of the boundaries and the doors will open and close when they need to and shutting off for any predetermined exclusion zones. Quite neat. And we're coming up to the end of the run, probably nudging the doors open just to make sure it all comes out. Then pulling up, turning around, and we'll head back for another load. Another good thing with this hydraulic GPS combo, it's got a digital sight gauge. And while it's not completely necessary because we've got a window into our hopper here, it does help to fine tune and calibrate the load as you go. See I'm looking there, the sight gauge is showing empty. And that tells me that the load has run out the same time that the digital gauge is running out. Meaning the system is calibrated accurately and it's giving a true constant rate on the ground. And as we start our turn onto short finals, bringing the power back, doing a turn onto short finals seems to be a lot easier for me as opposed to a straight in approach, sort of similar to the old World War II carrier approaches. Wings level, flare, and touchdown. We're sowing lime fertilizer today. That's crushed limestone, lime rock. And we're applying this at about one ton per hectare. And that helps get the pH level up on the soil, which ultimately helps the grass grow better, which is great. As we spin around, line back up with the truck, open our lid, trim, power, prop, fuel, dump, clicker, switches up, reset, load, and watch it all happen much easier getting an indication when the truck's done and getting out your way versus the other setups we have with the aircraft loading and the hopper behind the cockpit. It can also be a bit frightening sometimes too because the bucket there from the truck gets seemingly close to you. 
and I'm looking in the hopper window there so I can tell we're almost done so I'll start feeding some power flick the switch to shut the lid stir the porridge check my flaps trucks out of the way and away we go certainly an enjoyable aircraft to fly this one it's a lot more comfortable and more suited to my frame I'm a little bit taller I do believe this B model 502 B model was somewhat underpowered for the operations in New Zealand the XP however is a different story plenty of boogie and we all like to boogie it's airborne there drifting left slowly raise our flaps get our speed up start our turnaround just for comparison this 502 B model is a 750 horsepower engine versus the 502 XP which is 867 horsepower that extra hundred and a bit makes a huge difference as we turn around back onto our run and we're just doing one run on a pattern that's called back to back which is where each run is beside to or next to the previous using the light bar and moving map once again to line us back up with our run and once again just flicking a small switch arming the system and concentrate on flying a straight line and flying it safely there aren't too many hazards on this job the the one of note would probably be the houses which are on the left hand side once we get towards the end of the run and we'll just apply some normal noise abatement procedures now if you have another look at that sight gauge i was talking about earlier you'll see it's a little bit over halfway down the run just keep an eye on that now and as we go and you'll see it should get pretty close to zero once we get to the end and I can use that as a guesstimation on the fly if that's about halfway through and we're about halfway through our run and it looks like there's about half a load left in the hopper through the peep hole to sit and tidy and now at the end of the run spin around head back and you if you can see that we're 100 kilos out which is pretty good I'll just make a couple of fine tune adjustments to get that bang on and we'll head on back in the downwind I am also operating within a control zone here Rotorua control zone so I've got to have two comms running here one on tower and the other ones on ground comms and while this is something extra to contend with it's actually in some ways a lot easier to deal with because there's someone else keeping an eye out for traffic too also some pub grub info for you to digest Lake Rotorua translates into Lake Lake 2. Another interesting tidbit, you can cut the cheese and not get blamed for it. <coughs> Just make sure it's silent, the more you know. Now we roll out, flare and touch down. Trundle on up to the loading area. See it's reasonably narrow up here, we're getting close to the bin on the right side so I'm watching that and then spinning around and lining ourselves back up and doing it all again. That is us, hope you guys enjoyed. My name's Jimbo, you have a good one. Hooroo!